Greetings to you, my brothers and my sisters out there watching um, this program. Uh, we want to bring to you God's word. And um, we are talking about the characteristics of a true and genuine church. Let's pray uh, before we delve into God's word. Dear Lord, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this time. We want to pray that uh, whatever we're going to talk about today, about your church, the genuine church, um, talked about in Acts chapter 2. Lord, may you speak to us. May you open our hearts, our eyes, and our ears that we will listen to your word, what you're saying to us. The Lord, we will apply it in our lives to change us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The passage we are looking at is um, Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. The fellowship of believers. And um, I'll read a few verses. It says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet in the temple's courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with gladness and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily, those who are being saved. If you are new, if you are new in town and you set, <clears throat> set out to look for a church of fellowship, you realize that there are many churches around our beautiful city, Kampala. Some meeting in big buildings, others in meeting in the marketplace, some meeting in the open spaces, and some meeting in our homes. If you are that kind of person, what kind of church are you looking for? In other words, what are the five characteristics of a genuine church that we find in the book of Acts of the Apostles? In other words, is your church a replica of the church Dr. Luke describes in the New Testament? The scriptures highlight some of the things they practiced which enabled this church to grow to exponential levels. One of the things that we see um, in Acts chapter 242, it says that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. The believers persisted in listening to what the apostles taught in order to understand the truth. Who is God and what he expects of his people who have just turned away from their sinfulness into his marvelous light. As a believer and a Bible teaching church, find a Bible teaching church and learn more about God through the daily reading, studying of God's word. Remember, not all churches are Bible teaching churches. But may God's spirit lead you to a true Bible teaching church to help you grow in your spiritual matters with God. The second mark, true genuine mark of, um, of a church is uh, the church that fellowships. Acts chapter 2 verse 40, 43 says, And to fellowship. So they fellowshiped together every day. In Rotary Clubs, the word fellowship has become more popular. In fact, when it is used, you may think that it's a group of believers or church meeting to worship. Fellowship means meeting together for a common cause. As God's church, we fellowship with one another to strengthen each other, encourage one another so that together we can grow in God's word. A guy called Nelson in one of his victories said, I had the happiness to command a band of brothers. The church is a, re is the, is a real church only when it is a band of brothers. Fellowship binds us like a family does to brothers and sisters. Hebrews 10, 24 says, Do not give up the habit of meeting together as some are in the habit of doing this fellowship. Doing. This fellowship is about what we give as well as what we receive from one another. The third genuine characteristic of a church is that the church prays. Literally, the text reads, they were continually devoting themselves to the prayers. It refers to a set times of corporate prayer. Whenever and wherever the church meets, 
whether in a large meeting or in the temple courts or from house to house, prayer ought to be woven into the life of the church. Our singing can and should be directed to God in prayer. In some of the difficult meetings at a church where hard decisions are going to be made, we often stop to commit a difficult decision or decisions to the Lord or seek his mind in prayer. In your personal and, and family life, prayer ought to be a normal, frequent response when a personal problem arises or when you talk about someone who is facing a problem. Prayer acknowledges our total dependence on the living God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 7, it says, Paul urges the believers to pray without ceasing. Some, in fact, some other versions say, pray continuously. As Christians, we need to live and walk daily in prayer to commune with God, our creator. The fourth characteristic that marks the, the church is the church that worships God. Acts chapter 2, verse 47 says, Praising and enjoying the favor of all the people. The early believers were very intentional. They loved the Lord and worshipped in sincerity of heart. They never forgot God's vi go to visit God's house. We must never forget that God knows nothing in solitary religion. You can't live in a solitary environment. God's spirit moves upon his worshipping people. A people who have come together to worship him. Are you going to church where they worship other things rather than God? Then you are on the wrong side of God's original church. The church that worships God, a place where God's people meet up for fellowships, break bread together and meet each other's needs is where God's wedding is. We are told not to share with a lazy or irresponsible person who refuses to work according to Paul's letter to the 2 Thessalonians, chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 6 to 12. But if a brother or sister needs the basics of life, like food, like shelter, like clothing, not buying airtime for their phone or buying alcohol to drink, then we should be quick to share God's blessing with that person. According to what Paul says to us in 2 Corinthians, uh, chapter 8 and 9, to meet people's needs. The last characteristic of a church, of a genuine church, is the church that is happy. If you read again, um, Acts chapter 2, verse 47, it says, Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. The character of a true and genuine church is that of a happy church. I've been to some sad churches where the only couple of people, real sad, but a happy church that we talk about in the Acts, in the book of Acts, is the church where there is love, joy, and happiness, an expression of goodness and presence of God that attracts people and is desiring to be part of this church. Gloomy people don't attract followers, but joyful people do. Always hopeful and forward-looking, a wonderful attraction to the many. Over the years, the different churches where I've worked, I have always seen people joining the church saying, this is where I want to call home. Will people at your church call it home? Where there is God's love, joy, and sincerity of heart. My brothers, as I conclude, and sisters, these five characteristics, I remain that God's church is a Bible-teaching church. That God's church is a prayerful church. That God's church is the fellowship of believers where his people gather in unity and sharing what they have with one another. God's church is a worshiping church where the true worshipers worship him in truth and in spirit. And lastly, that God's church is a church which exudes God's love and joy which is evident to all. May God help us be part of the church which reflects his true character in the way we live our lives on a daily basis. May God bless you. Amen. Amen.